One of the greatest benefits of FOSS is the ability to view and modify any code you want. And you can even go so far as branching off an existing project in what is known as a fork. Not this kind of fork, a software fork. And forking a project is often brought up as a response to basically anything going bad. Oftentimes as a joke, but sometimes 100% serious. The dev doesn't want to add a feature you really want, fork the project. The dev is a nightmare to work with, fork the project. The dev is hit by a bus, who is going to run the project? Fork the project. And it's always great to know this exists as an option if there's nothing else that can be done. But it probably shouldn't be your go-to option. Before going nuclear, it's much better to try to fix the problems within the project. If the dev is a nightmare to work with, maybe you're just a nightmare at explaining your issues. Try to explain things in a cleaner way, try to explain them in a different way, and maybe you'll actually get through to this person. If you really want a feature, if possible, go and implement it yourself. If a developer isn't interested in working on something, maybe they'll be interested in having it merged if someone else goes and does it. And if a project seems abandoned, maybe try to get in contact with the maintainer and see if they'll give you maintainer rights. But in some cases, that's simply not possible. In which case, maybe a fork is the best option. But forking a project is a lot easier said than done. Yeah, it's pretty easy to hit the fork button on GitHub or GitLab. Yeah, it's pretty easy to clone the repo using Git directly. But doing this, you haven't really made a fork. All you've done is copied the repo. The real fork starts when you start developing it. And like it or not, there are some serious concerns with doing so. If you go into this naively, there are some projects which are effectively unforkable, at least with a hard fork. The best example being the Linux kernel. If you go into the Linux kernel thinking you are going to hard fork that project, good luck with that. If you want to do it, totally fine. But you're going to very quickly realize you've taken on way too much work to actually get anything done. But there are some smaller examples as well, like GIMP, like Critter, like Xorg, even smaller projects than that. Unless you have a team prepared, or there is a lot of movement behind doing a hard fork, a great example of this being the movement from X386 to Xorg. Nobody wanted to work on X386 anymore and worked on this new fork instead. But a lot of other projects are basically dead on arrival. They realize there's just too much work and they end up being abandoned. With the exception of a soft fork like Zenacara to Xorg or the Licorix or Zen kernel to the Linux kernel. The difference between a hard fork and a soft fork is a soft fork tracks the changes of the upstream project. A hard fork takes that main project and then goes in a completely different direction. In the simplest sense, a soft fork is basically taking the original project and adding some additional patches, which is what pretty much every Linux distro is doing. Your Linux kernel is probably not the Torvalds kernel. Your kernel's probably got some additional patches, maybe security patches, maybe feature patches, maybe things have been backported, and that's the kernel you're using. This is basically a soft fork. And if a distro ever backports security patches for any of their applications, that's basically a soft fork of the application as well. And that is a much simpler endeavor than, say, not liking DWM in the state that it currently is, and then hard forking the project into a completely separate tool like Awesome WM. This is something that did happen, and this is one of those rare cases where a fork does make it through the mud and does become viable on its own two legs. Now, DWM and Awesome are two very clearly different projects. DWM has no features. Awesome WM has every feature. Yes, they are both window managers, but the overlap between the two probably isn't that great. But when there is a hard fork and there does still remain a lot of overlap, there is some legitimate concern over splitting developer effort, where initially it might be totally fine. Like, hey, here's this exciting new fork. Let's all go work on that one. What may happen in the long term is it leaves both projects worse off. Instead of having all of the developer effort concerted on this one project, now you have half in both places and neither project is getting maintained really that well. 
But with that being said, I don't want to discourage people from forking a project if that seems like the best option to go with. Like with that DWM to awesome example, these are completely different projects with completely different focuses. There is absolutely no world where working within the DWM project is ever going to make it turn into what Awesome WM is today. DWM is a very simple window manager, missing basic features, and you're expected to patch those features in yourself. Awesome WM is this giant window manager with every feature you could ever want, a Lua programming API, and you can make it do absolutely crazy things. That functionality is never going to happen in DWM unless you basically just make the Awesome WM patch and just patch it into DWM. But at that point, why have you not just forked the project? And some forks save a project from demise. Say for example, developers leave, or maybe developers are kicked out, licenses change, and my two favorite examples being, and if you've watched this channel before, you know exactly where I'm going, PolyMC, the Minecraft client, and X3D6, the Xorg predecessor. So PolyMC was plodding along perfectly fine. Everybody loved it. Nobody really had any problem with it whatsoever, except for one person, one of the founders of the project who basically went rogue. He didn't like the politics that were being discussed in the project and basically booted everybody out of the organization. He tried to rebuild the project, but you know, when you lose all your developers, the project is pretty much dead. There was a commit 12 hours ago, and the commits that are happening here are mainly fairly little things. Like, there's a couple of things here and there, maybe a couple of tiny feature changes, but nothing like it was before. And all those devs that got kicked out moved over to another project called Prism MC. And Prism MC is very actively being developed. Like, you can see commits are being made, you know, multiple times a day, multiple commits in a day, and it's just as strong as it was before. As for x 86 this was at one point the X11 server we used on Linux. But in 2004, the developers of the project had a great idea. So, you know this GPL thing, this license that everybody on Linux seems to be a fan of, the Linux kernel is using. A lot of people have a lot of respect for Stallman. They have a lot of respect for the free software movement and think this is the direction that Linux should be taking. What if we change the license of X3D6 to be incompatible with the GPL? Clearly, nobody liked that. And after some really big people got kicked out of the X3D6 project, this was the last straw that broke the camel's back, and a lot of people moved on to a separate project. That project became Xorg. In one way, both of these projects destroyed the original, but in another, it saved the project for the general users. It took a project that was going to destroy itself and then actually made it viable for years to come. People started developing it and people then, you know, replaced it in their minds as this is the project that everybody is using. But with all that being said, there are definitely going to be forks which aren't going to be as successful, like Glimpse, the non-offensive fork of GIMP, which nowadays has been abandoned, it's all archived, and nobody is working on it. Or things like Audacium and Tenacity coming from the Audacity project when they brought in the contributor license agreement, they brought in some telemetry stuff, a new company had purchased Audacity, and a lot of people just weren't really happy with the direction they were going. Now, Tenacity does have some level of development and does have a fairly small user base, but it hasn't replaced Audacity in the minds of pretty much anyone. These projects in particular are what are known as protest forks, and I've done a full video explaining what they are and whether they're a good thing and all that stuff, so be sure to go and check that one out. But for now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think forking is always a good idea? Have you forked a project yourself and have you actually maintained it and made it a good project? Do you think there actually are some projects which are basically unforkable? I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one over, these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe, still bear pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and fork this video.